If you're at that stage in your playing where you've gotten the basics down, but your grooves and fills are just held back, they're hindered by a lack of foot speed, then today's lesson is especially for you. I don't want you constantly worrying or fearing getting tired in the middle of a song or having a clumsy bass drum foot that's just sloppy and not doing what it's supposed to or simply getting stuck where you just can't play any faster. I don't want you dealing with any of that. So let's solve all this. Follow my three steps today to get your right foot playing pairs of 16th, so basically kick doubles at 100 beats a minute so that you can feel more free, creative, and able to play whatever you want to on the drums. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians others want to play with and want to listen to. And we do this by teaching you the core fundamental drumming skills that actually get you the results that matter and get you those results a lot quicker, saving you a lot of time in the practice room. Today's gonna be a lot of fun because we're talking about the secret to the perfect foot placement on your pedal. I'm gonna show you how to find that, how to find exactly where you need to be sitting and where to put your foot on the foot plate for maximum success. Also how a super simple slow exercise will transform your foot's abilities. This is really interesting and I think you're gonna to relate to this struggle that we're, we're talking through here today. And then lastly, we'll talk about how to apply your kick doubles to grooves and supercharge your independence. That's where the rubber meets the road and where you can get on that upward spiral of success where you're using what you're practicing, you're using it in music. This is gonna be a lot of fun. But first, there is a big problem that I bet you can relate to that halts so many drummers in their tracks and keeps them from ever reaching their full potential and reaching their dreams and goals on the drums. And it's this, not knowing what to practice next. Maybe you found something to practice for a time, but then you practice that and you're like, well, what's next? I worked on this stuff. I worked on this YouTube lesson. I went and took this drum lesson and I learned these things, but what do I do next? You have to constantly be moving forward. And so what happens is we work on the one thing and then we kind of get tired of that or we don't really master it. Then we get bored and we get stuck and we start to stagnate, we stop growing and we start wondering if we're actually really capable of mastering the drums. I don't want you in that place. I don't want you to be stuck. I don't want you losing motivation and getting discouraged. So I've got a free PDF e-guide that's gonna help you out a bunch. This is the Avoid Getting Stuck, Know What to Practice Next guide. It's called Six Steps to Pro Level Drumming. And what it does is it breaks up the whole drumming journey you go through from beginner to mastering the instrument into these six stages that I believe every drummer goes through. So you can identify whether you're in the beginner stage or maybe the jamming drummer stage or the improvising drummer stage. You'll know, you'll, it'll be easy to figure out exactly which stage you're in. And from there, you'll know what to practice, what, what you should be working on there, and then what to work on to level up. So this is your complete handbook. It's always gonna show you what you need to be practicing next so that you're never getting stuck, never losing hope, and always moving toward that dream of mastering the drums. This is what I want for you, and I bet it's what you want to. It's a no-brainer, go grab that guide. All right, on with today's lesson. The secret to the perfect foot placement on your pedal, which also happens to be the key to playing fast. And the reason why I, I call this a secret is not because it's necessarily unknown or it's that unique of a thing, it's just that for some reason, this whole technique remains a secret for so many of us for so long. And for the longest time, we play with our foot at the wrong spot to our disadvantage, not realizing it, only to find years later, oh, you know what? If I just move my foot a little, everything's so much easier. That's the way it was for me. And so I hope this is really helpful to you. Here's what we're gonna do. At a fundamental level, you need to be sitting far enough back from your kick drum that you can actually place your foot where it needs to be, which is about right here. Too many times we slide our feet too far up because we think that we're gaining more control there. Because technically we have more, I think torque is the word, I think technically we have more torque, there's more mechanical advantage if we're further up the foot plate, right? Uh, just the mechanics of a lever. But we're actually having to move more to play there and so we can actually be more relaxed and actually get more speed and more volume, more fluidity, all the good things we need from the kick drum when we're more about right here with two to three inches between the end of our shoe or the end of our big toe and the chain of the pedal. But in order to do that, it's one thing to say do that, but if you're not sitting far enough back, it's gonna be tricky. By the way, this applies to heel up or heel down. If you're playing heel up, you can get by with being a little closer, but then you've gotta sit a little higher probably. If you're playing heel down, then you definitely need to be far enough back that your leg is not less than a 90 degree angle. If your foot's down here, wanna make sure we're about right here versus cramped up. So here's what I want you to do. This is a simple, it might even seem dumb because it's so simple. Exercise I want you to do to figure out how far back from your kick you need to be sitting. 
honestly, the big biggest problem is that most drummers are not sitting far enough back. Most of us tend to sit too close because we feel like we have more control over the kit when we're like right up here on it and sitting closer. But so many times we actually need to give ourselves more space, especially that right leg and that right foot. So we've got to overcome this hurdle, the whole problem of sitting too close and therefore we're actually getting more tired than we need to. If you're finding that you're getting more tired down here than you think you ought to be, it very well could be that you're just sitting too close. So here's what I want you to do. Take your drum stool and just set it somewhere else in your room. I would do this for you right now, but then I have to move all the cameras. Idea is get it away from your drum set. So you've just got all this space around you. Sit down on your stool and plant your feet on the floor and think, all right, imagine I'm playing the drums. Where do my feet naturally land? What feels comfortable? So actually try to not even think specifically about your kid. Just think, all right, I'm air drumming. I'm not even thinking about my drums. I'm just thinking what feels right? What feels comfortable? If I'm playing heel up, you know, I'm bouncing my leg here. If I'm playing heel down, I've got my heel planted. And so there, as you're just, you know, sitting out there in your room, practice having your heel planted, moving your foot like you're playing and play around with, okay, let's move my heel a little closer, move my heel a little further away. What feels right? And maybe do all this with your eyes closed, or at least not looking at your feet, not thinking about where your feet are, just feeling it out and thinking what makes sense, what feels right here. And once you feel like you found that sweet spot with nothing around you, you're just sitting on your drum stool in the middle of the room, then look down and notice, okay, here's where my heel is, or if I'm playing heel up, here's where my toe is landing. Maybe you, you realize, you know what, I need to sit just a little bit higher. Maybe you feel a little better to go a tiny bit higher. So try adjusting your stool. Or I've had students that actually have switched from heel up to heel down. And if you're thinking about that, if you want to be daring and switch to heel down, maybe lower your stool a tiny bit. Whatever needs to happen, I want you to do an honest assessment here and think, okay, what did I just discover? Odds are you're going to find something here that you didn't notice before just because your, your drum set's not there. You're, not, you're no longer in that box. You've taken yourself out of that box and you're able to think a little more openly and creatively here. So you'll probably realize, okay, it actually feels better, especially if playing heel down, to have your foot further away. Or if you're playing heel up, it feels better to still be kind of far away, but also just a little higher. So keeping those things in mind, come back over to your kit and make the necessary adjustments. For me personally, the big adjustment was just sliding my kick drum like six inches, maybe not quite that much, like four inches further away from me. Basically, I needed to sit further back. But sometimes it's best to just move your kick drum away rather than sit further back because then you've got to move all the things up here because you don't want to have to lean when you're playing. You want to keep, you want to make sure your cymbals are within reach, but the things aren't too close, but they're within reach. So it might be easiest just to push your kick further away. That's what I did. So I moved my kick drum out, mounted my rack tom on a basket stand so that it wasn't too far away from me. And that helped so much so that I have more leg room. And it felt weird at first. I felt like I wouldn't have as much control, but yet, it ended up giving me a more relaxed feel, ended up giving me more volume and more speed and less pain and less fatigue. So super simple, fundamental step one here, but I want you spending a lot of time on this, not necessarily a lot of time, I guess, but like dedicate some, some focus on figuring this out and experimenting and figuring out, all right, where is, my, where is my best comfort zone here? Even if it doesn't feel comfortable at first, how can I make sure I've got enough space and I'm not cramped up? That is worth figuring out, even if you spend 30 minutes messing with this and experimenting, or more than 30 minutes. But make yourself do that, because this is gonna help you really reach your fullest speed and volume potential on the bass drum, regardless of whether you're heel up or heel down. And that is absolutely essential to nailing these 16ths at 100 beats per minute, which we're gonna start moving towards specifically now in step two. So step two, how a super simple, slow exercise will transform your foot's abilities. So here's something interesting. A lot of times I'll hear from students, oh, I just, I can't play fast doubles. I can't play, you know, kick doubles at hundred beats a minute. That's even, that's something specific that I've heard. There's something about the hundred beat a minute mark. So that's why we're shooting for that today. And so I'll hear that, that they're struggling with playing fast kick notes. But then I'll also hear from the same student potentially that, you know, I'm having a hard time playing slow grooves like this. because of those two kick notes that are really slow, boom, boom, got, for some reason they don't really lock in. And so most of the time when, when somebody, when a drummer, when a student is having a hard time playing, playing quickly like that, generally there's also some kind of issue going on with playing slowly. So that's what I want you thinking about right now. I want you to maybe do some quick self analysis. If you're sitting at your kick, try playing something more slowly and ask yourself, okay, 
does it feel good slow? Do my kick drum doubles, if we call those doubles, doom, doom, does that feel okay slow? Is one note rushing? Is one note louder or softer than the other? Because generally what happens here is that the second note tends to be too quiet. For most drummers, that's the issue. As we get faster with our, generally we start losing the boom, boom, and it starts turning into, right? Because a lot of times, especially beginner drummers can pretty quickly figure out how to go and do that kind of thing. When you're choking up, it's kind of like just taking your stick and going, just playing a quick double, but not hard at all. Just put some pressure on the stick, push it down. Not difficult, a beginner can figure that out more quickly than they think. Same thing on the kick drum, where it's not hard to just go, especially if you've got the heads tuned fairly high, so you've got a little bit of rebound there, you've got some spring tension helping you out. And so a lot of times that's where we end up, where we've got a loud note and then a soft note that gets all fluttery and not good. But we want it to be, Like that, we wanna have those nice, even, strong notes. That's what we're shooting for. So we have, we have to overcome, we absolutely have to overcome that big issue of the unevenness. And most of the time that unevenness will manifest itself at the slower tempos too, where if we're playing, generally there's something funky going on like, where there's just something not quite right down there. So I show you all of that because I think you'll probably relate to this because I think we've all been through something like this where our kick drum just doesn't behave, our right foot doesn't behave at the slow tempos, and odds are that's what's going on. So we've gotta solve this at the slow tempos. So make sure that you're placing your foot correctly, like we figured out in step one. So you've got probably your heel on the heel plate, if you're, my, I'm a size 11, 11 and a half. Um, so make sure roughly you've got your big toe two, three inches from the chain. It's okay to even be further down here. What you'll notice, if you watch a lot of the most technically proficient drummers out there, um, I'm thinking like Jojo Mayer, Thomas Lang, like some of these guys who can just play insane foot speed, you'll find their feet are not up here because you really can't do that well up here. You'll find that they're way down here. Um, I'm blanking on which drummer this was that I happened to see a video of him playing not too long ago. He was playing way down here. He had like his foot way down here, probably halfway up the foot plate, and he was just blazing. And so it's so interesting how the fastest drummers out there, they don't have their feet way up here, they're down here. So you can err on the side of being further this way, but know that it requires more foot strength to play loudly and quickly the further down here you get. But the more potential you have for loudness and speed because your foot doesn't have to move as much. So those are the, the two things to be thinking about. So I recommend you aim for about right here starting out. Now what we have to do here, we have to bounce the beater. Now I know sometimes I get pushed back on this. There are drummers who would rather bury than bounce and they're like, man, I've been burying for 20 years. I'm gonna stick with burying the beater. I got my, my kick tune nice and low and I got you know the pillow inside there and the bearing just gives me that nice slam sound. Okay, but the problem is that if you're burying, you end up running into trouble as you get faster because in order to play fast, you have to bounce, right? If I sit here and I play, even if I bury the second note, even if I bury the second note, the first note had to bounce, right? I couldn't bury the first note because if you're burying, it takes too long. In order to play fast, you have to be bouncing the beater. And so that's kind of an interesting take on this, that if you're wanting to play fast, you have to bounce the beater. Whether or not you realize it, as you go faster, you are beginning to bounce the beater. So why not bounce it at the slow tempos? Generally, that's why there's, there's trouble when you're going slow because maybe you're burying when you're going slow and then as you're getting faster, you're trying to keep that up and it gets sloppy because of the burying. Or maybe you're bouncing when you're going fast like you should be, but then as you slow down, you don't feel comfortable with the bouncing so everything gets sloppy. Generally, those are the, those are the big issues going on here. So what you've got to do, the solution is simple. Just practice bouncing it when you play slowly like this. Just play two notes really slow like that. You'll notice when I do that, the beater comes to rest right here. So it bounces and it's always gonna to come to rest here. That's fine, you'll notice your beater doing the same thing. It's always gonna have a natural resting point. The further back your foot is, the further back that resting point will be. So just practice playing two notes like that. Just two notes in succession, not fast. You can even go quarter notes at 100. Let's see how slow this is.
crazy slow, right? Quarter notes at 100, you don't have to think about boom, boom. Like you can treat those as individual notes. Boom, boom. Super easy. Aim for a nice, clear, even sound where the beater is bouncing and both are the same volume. We don't want a loud soft, we don't want a soft loud, we don't want any burying or fluttering, like that. Instead, we want nice, clean notes. And then from there, simple, just gradually get faster. Probably pretty quickly, you can just switch over to eighth notes right there at 100. So we're still at 100 beats a minute. 100 is right here. Go ahead and try doing eights. If there's any trouble whatsoever, if there's anything not even, if there's not good sound quality, it's okay to slow it back down. But if you can get there to eights at 100, that's fantastic. That is a great point to, to be at where then we can start scaling things. But it's so crucial that you've got the sound quality and the consistency because if that's not there, if you don't have the beater bounce, the nice loud, Goom, goom, great even sound quality going on now. There's no reason to expect that it's gonna suddenly get better as you go faster. Uh, that's kind of like a universal law of learning an instrument, practicing an instrument. Generally things do not get better when you get faster. It might feel better as you get faster to you because it's like, oh, it's easier to not try to play super slow. But odds are, if there was any bit of sloppiness or inconsistency slowly, that's still gonna be there when you go fast. It might not be as obvious, but things aren't quite gonna feel right. And so if you really wanna master this, if you really wanna play awesome sounding, clean, kick doubles, 16th at 100, you have to make sure this is clean going very slowly. So we've gotta have that full beater motion, full beater bounce, nice and even. And by the way, this is just a prerequisite. Make sure you've got your pedal adjusted with a good beater angle that's at least 45 degrees like this. I'll link an additional lesson below where we dig into all the details of that, of adjusting your pedal and optimizing your pedal. Because uh, that could very well be an issue going on where maybe, maybe your pedal is just not adjusted the way it needs to. Maybe you don't have enough beater angle. Maybe your pedal's stiff, you need to put some oil on it, some dry lubricant. So we talk about that in another lesson I'll put in the description. So once you've gone through this, maybe you need to work on fixing up your pedal and making sure it's adjusted well because you definitely have to have that beater angle in order to have this kind of motion. So at this point, you're just practicing along with your metronome, doing eighth notes at 100, gradually upping the tempo. So each day, try to push it a little further, and it's totally okay to do the you know two steps forward, one step back, or three steps forward, two steps back. Because what you wanna do is push a little faster, see where you can go, and then if you run into any trouble, back it off again. So maybe you can get it going at 140. Or maybe it's a little sloppy at 140, so back off to 130. But maybe the next day or a few days later, you can get to 150. And maybe you get to 155, but it's kind of getting sloppy. So okay, back off to 140, spend some time there at 140, and the next day you'll find you can push a little further. So it's kind of that sort of, that's the way the progress works a lot of times, where you push to a certain tempo, but it's tough, it's at the edge of your comfort zones, so you gotta back off a little. Spend more time practicing at the back off tempo. Don't constantly push against the barrier because that's generally not how you push past the barrier. Spend some time a little slower, that way you're building that foundation and you're able to move forward from there. So what's cool here is as you keep moving faster and faster, eventually you get these eighth notes up to 200. And if you've got the eighth notes at 200, that's your 16th at 100, of course. And so at that point you're at 200, then you can reset your metronome to 100 and think of these as 16ths. And so on. Now, in practicing these, just a, a tip for as you're like working this as an exercise, when you're going slow, you could think one and two and three and four and one and two and so on. As you get faster, your brain wants to reset it so that the second note is on the beat. Because when, when we go really fast, 
we would rather hear it as ba ba da doon da bum, kind of like this. So I'll show you the difference. So this is the first way of doing it. Where the first note lines up with the beat. Here's the second way of doing it. That sounds more natural, right? Because that's probably what, what's going to happen more often in a groove where it's doom, 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 doom. And actually, that encourages us to even play the second note a little bit louder and feel the second note as the doom, 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 doom. And that's really practical in a groove setting because in a lot of grooves, we don't necessarily play them evenly. We might play something like. Doom, 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 doom. A lot of times that makes it feel better, honestly, when you can do soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. So that's a cool way to practice it. Aim, you know, in your fundamental exercise of doing it here, practice even volumes, go, 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 go. But then also practice it in a groove setting going boom, 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 boom. Kind of just trying to make it feel a little better, feel a little smoother, because dynamics are so important to establishing a cool, unique, smooth feel in a great pocket. And so that can be really helpful. So when you get into 16ths like that, I recommend shifting it over instead of doing a 1E, 2E, 3E, try going a 1, a 2. And so it might feel a lot more natural that way and you'll probably have more fun practicing the exercise that way. You know, probably 90 plus percent of mastering things on the drums it's as simple as just go really slow. There's not a magic technique. There's not some big secret, unless the secret is something simple that we don't think about, like put your foot in the right spot. Usually it, it involves something like, okay, make sure your technique is right, your grip is right, your foot placement is right. But once that's established, once the, the mechanics are correct, then it's just go really slow. Go really slow, make sure it's sounding good really slow, and then gradually work your way up. That's how you do it. So many times that's the case. And when you go really slow, that'll expose flaws. And you might find when you go slow, okay, I need to think about where I'm placing my foot or I need to think about where I'm gripping my stick. So keep that in mind. At this point, you know the mechanics here, you know the foot placement, the technique. Whether you're heel up or heel down, you've seen me doing this heel down, the same thing works heel up, so don't get hung up on that. One technique is not better than the other, whatever is most comfortable for you. That's what I want you to go for. So now you can gradually scale up in tempo and even if it's gonna take a while. If, if you don't have a lot of foot strength yet, if you're not playing a bunch, if you're starting out, it's gonna take a while. If you're more in that intermediate stage and you're playing a lot of songs and maybe you're playing some gigs, you've already got some good foot strength, so you'll get there more quickly. But be patient. Be patient with the process of gradually getting faster. Take pride in whatever, you know, five BPM improvement you can make. You know, if you make a five BPM improvement each day or every two or three days. That still amounts to a lot of progress over a few weeks and a few months. That means you're gonna get there. And so even if it's just a little bit of progress, take pride in that little bit of progress and that little bit more progress tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, you're gonna get there. Now, even, even as you're working on that, you can go ahead and dive into step three here where we want to apply your kick doubles to grooves and supercharge your independence. I say supercharge your independence because that's, that's what this is gonna do. And actually one of these exercises is pretty challenging, but all of this is really no good unless we can build some coordination. So we have to be focusing on, all right, we've got to supercharge our independence here and figure out how to tie this in with what our hands are doing so that we can use it. Because once you can use this, it becomes this upward spiral where, okay, I've now gotten my technique to where I can play quick doubles. Awesome, now I can use the quick doubles and if I'm using them, well, I'm gonna get better at the technique, I'm gonna get better at the independence and the speed's gonna get there and. I'm gonna get more comfortable and more confident, and so then that's gonna help me play faster, and if I can play faster and stronger, well, that's gonna help me use it in more songs, and use it in more fills and more grooves, and so it becomes more and more fun, upward spiral of success here. So, it's important that you're able to use this in some grooves and start applying this in songs. So, first exercise we wanna do, this is really simple. This is just a shifting doubles exercise where we're playing a basic beat like this. But we start off with a double on each beat, so it'll sound like this. So each beat is literally the same exercise we were doing a minute ago. We're basically just doing a four on the floor and it's very much the same exercise we were doing a few minutes ago, just with the foot to gradually build up the strength. But we're just applying that to eighth notes with the right hand, a back beat with the left hand on two and four. You can do it real chill, you know, with a cross stick here if you want to, to really focus on playing loudly down here and really listen to the kick. 
whatever you want to do, right hand on the ride, right hand on the hi-hat, that doesn't matter. The point is we're starting to tie this together, build some coordination. Most importantly, go very slow. Make sure everything's nice and tight. So that's the first way. Then we're just gradually shifting this. So we end up with four variations. The next one is. And then. And then lastly, my favorite where we do a one. Here's what this sounds like at 60 beats a minute. If you can do this at 60, that's a great starting place. So even if you get your, double, your eighth note doubles up to 120, that means you have the speed ability to then play this exercise at one, at 60 rather, at 60 beats a minute. And so then the challenge is just the coordination. We know the foot can do what it's supposed to, just the coordination. So it's okay to start working on these exercises to coordinate it all, even while you're still working on pushing up the speed. Don't wait until you've got the fast speed down here to then try tying it in, because we wanna have, again, that upward spiral where working on this helps this out and working on this helps this out, and so we're gradually lifting higher and higher. So here's what this exercise sounds like, all four variations at 60 beats a minute. Now here's our next variation. This is a little bit more challenging because we're gonna do 16th on the snare. And do the same shifting doubles thing. So we'll basically just go like this, where first we've got the one E, two E with the 16th, and then we shift it over just like we did before. And then we go to one E and a two E and. And then one E and a two E and. And lastly, here's what this sounds like at 60, all those variations back to back. And then one final thing you can do, you don't have to focus on this final thing, but spend most of your time on those first two. Practice playing doubles around the kit between hands and kick. Double, so to speak, where we do like a hand, hand, foot, foot, hand, hand, foot, foot. A fun way to apply a simple rudiment around the drum set, and it's a great way to work on linear playing and that coordination between each of your hands and your right foot. So literally just practice this. cool stuff you can do with that and you can even switch the sticking up you can go left right foot foot left right foot foot or right left foot foot practice each of those very slowly first snare snare kick kick and so that gives you a fun way to start constructing fills because not that every fill <laughs> needs to be as complex or fancy sounding as that but sometimes it can be really cool to insert kick doubles into a fill. Maybe something like this. Or sometimes a fill that starts with a kick double. So many options. If you can get comfortable with playing. And just positioning those kick doubles in different places, you know, uh, four four notes on a hand, then two notes on the kick. So one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. 
five, one, two, three, four, five, six, so seven, eight down there. So many different things you can do here. Sky's the limit. I'm not gonna try to break down every possibility for you, but by practicing those kinds of things, you can really push the coordination, really supercharge your independence, there's our word, and increase your ability to play linearly, where you're just doing all these different things. That's a great way to create unique tom grooves, unique fills. So many cool, you know, doom, 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 ka, doom, doom, doom. those can be very simple, like, very simple and straightforward like that, or they can be a little more weird, and when you can tie your hands and your kick to each other like that, doom, 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 and do those things effortlessly, there's so much cool stuff you can come up with. So many cool melodic fills, so many cool interesting grooves. Again, sky's the limit of what you can do. So practice those first two exercises and then practice that bonus one of doing the doubles and see where you can go with this. Always staying slow, focusing on cleanliness and precision, gradually working your way up. As we close, question for you. What is your specific foot speed goal? Also, what's a specific song you have in mind? So is there a particular song you can think of that has this kind of kick drum action, whether it's a fast groove or there's a particular fill that involves it? I would love to know. I'm always interested to know like songs that you're into, maybe popular songs that I haven't thought of that incorporate the things that we're learning. So if you can think of a song that's got the quick kick doubles, tell us in the comments. Maybe that song is your specific foot speed goal. Maybe you've got a crazy goal. Maybe you're wanting to get really fast. Or maybe you've got that short term goal where you're like, you know what? I just want to get to 16th at 85 or 80 beats a minute. It's okay to have these shorter term goals that's like, okay, I can achieve this in the next month. As a matter of fact, those are really great goals to have because they're very achievable and you know you can get there quickly. And once you do, there's some motivation to then go to the next one. And so maybe doubles at 100, maybe that shouldn't be your goal just yet. Maybe you should focus on, all right, I'm gonna do these cleanly at 70 or 80 or 85 and then set the goal of 100. Or maybe you're at a point you're playing where, okay, you can go a little crazier with this, doubles at 120. So let me know in the comments, what is your specific goal for say 16th doubles on the kick? Is it 90, 100, 120, whatever? Let me know, let's get a discussion going. This will be interesting. All right, thanks for hanging out today. This has been a lot of fun. This has been a really fun lesson. I really hope this is helpful to you. I hope this has provided you with lots of value so that you can move forward in your kick drum tempo and overcome these bass drum hurdles. I hope this is super helpful to you. Remember that you can do this when you take action, when you practice and you take these baby steps, you follow these steps and you set some short-term goals and you have specific milestones in mind, you're going to reach them, you're gonna make progress, even if it's just that tiny bit of progress every day, it's gonna compound, it's gonna really result in some big results after a few weeks and a few months. And so keep at it, don't get discouraged, keep at it. Know that you can do this, know that you can master this, and you can become the drummer that you want to be, that you are made to be. So thanks for hanging out today. I hope you have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week. I'll see you on the next lesson. Stay non-glamorous.